So for a while, Jason and I have had the idea of doing a podcast here in the DCF studio, but we actually got beat to it by somebody in our own studio. My wife went ahead and started a podcast with her sister talking about everything involving motherhood. It's a really good, relatable podcast. They don't hold anything back. Go ahead and check that out if you're interested. But we really couldn't start this video without just flat out saying thank you to all of you guys, the amazing support from you guys with the launch of the DCF experience. We already have people coming from four four different countries to visit us here to come to our two-day event. What an amazing turnout it's going to be. We're so excited for this. There are limited slots still available. It's filling up super quickly, guys. So if you're interested, we will have that link down below. But now, let's go ahead and start today's video. What's going on, guys? Thank you for joining us for another video. Another beautiful Sunday here in the DCF studio. Today is the conference championships for the NFL, so I'm going to be watching those as we are working today, and that means next week is the Pro Bowl. So earlier this week, we had a pretty exciting and rather unexpected DM come across our desk. Stefan Gilmore of the uh, New England Patriots, the likely defensive player of the year, hit us up and said he wanted to do two pairs of cleats for the Pro Bowl. So that's what we're working on today. He sent over some really unique cleats. I have never even seen these before. These are called the Edge Elites. They have a crazy zebra pattern on them. And the other one is a classic navy blue Nike Speed Low. You guys have seen these a bunch of times. So we're gonna do a Mickey Mouse inspired pair for Disney since the Pro Bowl is in Orlando. And then the other one, I'm gonna do something to kind of match the uniforms. It looks like the AFC is rolling out a pewter color uh, inspired uniform this year. So now I'm gonna go ahead, get into a little bit of mock-up style stuff in some Procreate on the iPad. So let's go get to that. So I'm not at all trying to spend a lot of time and pack a lot of detail when I'm doing mock-ups and things like that. I'm really just trying to start to put pen to paper and really start to visualize how some of my ideas might come together. To me, this is when you could just start to see placement of certain things and a lot of my better ideas come as I start moving into the mock-up. And things change once you start laying paint to them. We're working with two pretty weird cleats today. We're not starting with all white simple cleats that we have the entire world at our fingertips of what we can do. So I'm trying to work smarter rather than harder with both of these. Since we're starting with this all navy blue one that we're gonna be doing the Mickey Mouse on, rather than trying to convert this to an all red cleat is something you might think of right away when doing Mickey Mouse, I'm trying to visualize how can I incorporate the navy blue into my design. So I'm gonna to try to bring in the red through stronger elements like the swoosh, really have it pop out and stand out there, do some things like red stars around Mickey and stuff like that. And then for the other cleat, this is a crazy material and a crazy pattern. So rather than trying to right away go with something super colorful or a bright yellow or something like that, I'm gonna to try to work smart on these also and build out a pewter design. You know, something that I can obviously cover up once I can get this to all light gray and things like that. So not every shoe and not every base shoe is gonna allow you to do every design that you may ever wanna try. Sometimes you need to work with what's in front of you and that's kind of what we're doing today. So now it's just about that time to move into everybody's favorite step, some prep work. Taped up, got our adhesion promoter laid down, and we are ready to go ahead and start spraying both of these.
All right, so now we have both of these completely base coated. Really pleased with how this pewter one is looking. I love some of the guiding lines that we added with the stencils along with the chain link fence pattern. These are looking really sweet. I'm excited to keep going with them. On the Mickey one, a couple dots and star patterns. I always have to add something to my backgrounds. Just sort of what I like to do as an artist and just kind of portrays what I like to do. Keep things real busy and exciting to look at, you know, from any type of angle as you move around the shoe. So Sundays are also the day where I like to try to get ahead on all of our stencil orders. So I have a bunch of those to get through now. Okay, so now that we're finally all done with that little pattern on the toe box, that took quite a while. Now I'm ready to move into some character work right here. And what I did was lightly ghost in this kind of rotating rising sun pattern it's called. And what it does is it's just going to add some highlights behind the character, behind Mickey Mouse. Just make him pop a little bit more, make him stand out. It has a pretty cool cartoony element. So now I'm going to move into laying down the stencil for Mickey himself. So now we have both cleats completely wrapped up. I went ahead and applied our finisher that's drying right now. I actually switched over probably at the end of summer, start of football season, I switched over to the Liquid Kicks Matte Finisher. I'm a huge fan of this stuff, mainly because it really can help you achieve the cleanest factory look that I've seen from any type of finisher. Whether you're using a Krylon Matte Spray or the Angelus Matte Finisher, it still has a little bit of a sheen to it, but this stuff already has kind of the dulling agent mixed into it. So you're just able to achieve this super matte factory look, and that's what I'm always going for. So I do still mix the duller within the paint itself, but but now when I apply the finisher, it still keeps that super flat look. So huge fan of this stuff. But once those are done drying, I'm going to go ahead, pull out our small piece of turf that you guys have seen before, take some pictures of these. And uh, that got me thinking, something that has been asked a little bit more in some of our recent Q&As, our live AMAs, whatever you want to call them, our live streams. People have been asking to see an updated studio tour. So before we moved in here in the summer, 
you know, we posted the studio when it was completely empty and I kind of talked about my vision for what it was gonna become. And now that we've been in here full time for four or five months or so, I thought it might be cool to walk you guys through how I kind of set everything up and whatnot. And during all my years of customizing, I've worked in a lot of different size spaces. I've worked in really tiny spaces, spare bedrooms. I've worked in larger warehouse type spaces with way more space than I could ever even utilize. And now I'm kind of in what I would consider the perfect size space. And I just think I've really narrowed down what's important when it comes to designing or building out your own custom sneaker workshop or studio, something like that. So if you guys are interested in that, please let us know in the comments down below. But now I'm gonna go ahead, take some pictures of these and show you how these turned out. So a quick little pro tip, I'm not sure if you guys caught this one as I was packing those up, but one thing that you can do if you have a bunch of standard size shipping boxes, the ones that we use are from Larson Packaging Products, they're 17 by 11 by eight. You can go ahead and stack together multiple of these and just go ahead and seal them up. And now all of a sudden, you could fit multiple pairs inside this larger package. So in the event that you don't happen to have a larger shipping box where you can fit multiple pairs, you can just go ahead and stack together these standard size boxes and now you can fit anywhere from two to four, stack it up higher if you need to, fit a bunch of pairs in one box and not need to go out and find a larger shipping box. But now that these are all wrapped up, it's time to go ahead, get these overnighted to Orlando so they can make it there in time for the Pro Bowl. Hopefully I'll be able to find some cool pictures of Stefan Gilmore actually wearing these. That's always really cool to see, but let me know what you guys thought about both of these pairs and what you guys thought about this style of video. It's not really a dedicated tutorial video, but a little bit more of a walkthrough of a project that we're currently working on. But we do have a really cool tutorial coming at you guys later in the week that we know you guys have been asking for for a while. So make sure you're subscribed, have those post notifications turned on. Go ahead, give this video a like if you haven't already. We'll see you guys in that next video.